Hello everyone, welcome to Aardvark Asks. I'm your host Michael Robert and with me today is Chief Development Officer Rob O'Farrell. Uh, he's, uh, he works at Dovetail, the uh, simulation studio focusing on uh, fishing and uh, trains and railway. Uh, hello Rob, thank you very much for joining me today. Hello, thank you. Uh, thank you, yeah. Uh, so uh, tell us all about being a Chief Development Officer at Dovetail and kind of what a typical day involves, what your roles and responsibilities are and just give us a bit more about that. Um, so I, I always explain it, it, it I'm the guy, I'm lucky enough to make the games, make the simulations. I get to work with my directs and art director, technical director, you know, executive producers, product of development on actually how we deliver and make great simulation. Um, my day can range from being in meetings, talking about what we're doing, what we're making, to actually sitting and playing software. Yeah, and then that, that, that's the fun part. That's the bit where I get to feedback on, okay, does it feel right? Have we got this right? This is a loco, and I and I'm as a gamer, I will play it from first time experience. Does 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 something feel right? Um, then I jump in out and, and fish, and and sometimes go fishing in bass and play that. And does it feel right again? And give that feedback. Um, other things, of course, we talk about you know making sure is the studio okay? Is everybody everybody right in the studio? Especially you know in the in the world that we're in now, where we've got a mix of people at home and in the office, it's important to make sure the studio is feeling right. So tell us how long uh, you've been at Dovetail and what your experience has been, you know, in, in your role, get into that role and uh, sort of your development in that role. No, oh, sure not. Um, so I, I started at Dovetail around about eight years ago, um, just over, and I think I joined as an executive producer. Um, and I actually joined because for a while we got into the flight sim space um, and I was going to grow that and look at that. But I got more involved in trains and at the time we weren't doing fishing. Um, and I got asked to look at, right, okay, how do I take, how can you take Dovetail from a, a one sim product, which we were at the time, tr train sim, to multi sim, and that's where flight and, and fishing came in, but also multi platform. Um, and that's a big challenge for us because we'd been PC developers and then going onto console, not only making it work on Xbox and, and, and Sony platform, but also getting that controller working in your hand and making the leap from PC players to console players. And actually what we're finding, especially with Trains in World, they're the same. They, 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 everyone just wants to have a great experience. Uh, and, and that was a big part of how I grew um, through Dovetail. And eventually I was, I was lucky enough to be asked to come and join the board around about a year and a half ago, I think around about when the pandemic started. So, and because at the time the board at Dovetail didn't have anyone that could represent development and there were things there as part of a business that what do we need to grow on and how do we evolve and, and that's why I come board there to help the business take us further forward. Obviously like you said you started as a executive producer wasn't it so before that then what was your uh, general career background what got you to uh, that position at Dovetail and uh, what was the catalyst that uh, that made you go from your previous role into uh, to working at Dovetail? Previously before there, well, that, that I was at EA for 14 odd years and I, I did some great titles there. Uh, and I finished on Need for Speed Most Wanted uh, with Criterion and actually had, had a great time, but I think I've been at EA quite a while. And there were times where you can get stagnated in, in, in the video games business if you're at the same place and you don't challenge yourself to actually learn some new things. And fortunately, um, John Rizik, um, who is our CEO, spoke to me back then and he'd been at EA previously as well and said, look, come and, come and talk to Dovetail. Come and, come and see what you can do here. And I think that's, that was the challenge that I needed. My son was horrified and I think my son at the time was around about, uh, cracky, would have been about 12, 11, 12. He's like, what do you mean you're leaving EA? What do you mean you're, 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 you just made Need for Speed and you're gonna make this train product? Come on. It, 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 I, I was not very popular in my household for the time, for a while. That's, but he now understands actually what we've done and what we've delivered. He's, he's not embarrassed anymore and he's actually quite proud to say what his dad makes. Uh, so, and I think that that's a testament that shows how we as a, as a, as a company have grown, especially in the games industry uh, and in the UK industry, that actually Dovetail is a great place to be. And I, and I use my son's measurement of that. He's, he tells his son, he's at Sussex Uni now, and he talks about what I do. And, he, and, he's, and his mates play, play my games. 
and I, I always feel proud about I, it. I think uh, you can have all the career achievements you want, but you've also got to factor in those uh, those family and friends achievements. Oh, yes. So if you if you've gone from uh, your son being annoyed at you to now being proud and his friends also play it, that's a that's a fantastic development outside of your career as well. Which yep, is really without cool. a doubt. Yeah, definitely. So, yeah, like you said, you had 14 years at EA before and over 30 years in total in the industry. Um, have you got any like highlights or uh, specific projects that you're really proud that you've worked on? Well, it's, it, yeah, it's interesting. I, I, I joined the industry because I was in the building trade. I was a scaffolder um, and I fell when I was 80 foot up, but I fortunately caught myself. That's always a story. And, and when I was about, fell about 15 foot, I caught myself before I, I, I landed down the bottom. And I thought I'd better get out of this. And it's very dangerous. And I got a job testing lemmings on the Game Gear, uh, which was a great game at the time. Um, so fortunately, my flatmate was working in video games. He got he got me a job just doing the testing. Um, I was lucky enough to be a producer on Mortal Kombat. Um, and Mortal Kombat 2 on the... I think about nine formats apart from the SNES version, which couldn't do the blood, of course, at the time. Um, so the Mega Drive version could. So that was that was always a great thing. Uh, and then the EA come knocking, did Football Manager, um, FA Premier League. I love football, so that's part, part of the passion. I think that's why I'm loving it. Dovetail, um, because I was passionate about football. Um, but Harry Potter came along. Yeah, great, great film, great film license. Bit of a challenge to make those games, but we, we did. Um, and then I think my highlight though, I, I made lucky enough to make a um, Zubo, which was a kid's title on the DS. Um, and I, I've always been proud of that because it was an, an original kid's title we made with some brilliant characters. And it's something that's always made me proud. Um, but, and we learned a lot. You know, I think that's the other thing. You're, I always try and learn from making games as I go forward every time. So, cause I wanna make great times. That's why I, I enjoyed my time at Criterion because those guys really showed and taught me how to make sure you build a game from the start um, to really make sure that game feels good from as soon as you boot it up. Yeah, and Criterion are great at that. Yeah, it sounds like, uh, you know, all those fantastic projects and varied as well from, you know, Need for Speed to Football Manager to uh, to all the others. Uh, it sounds like you there's no way you can't learn a lot uh, from from that kind of track record. Three decades in the industry to, to get that experience. Uh, reflecting upon that then, uh, what's your kind of thoughts as, as someone that's had that kind of time in it in different roles and various levels of seniority, what's your kind of thoughts on the past, present and future uh, states of the industry and sort of the direction it's going? I think the fact is now the industry is far more open. If, there, if I think back to what it was like 20, 30 years ago, I think it was far more closed. I think it was far more restrictive to actually get in and actually harder to get into the industry. Um, I think you probably needed to know people from, you know, I did. Um, and, but it, it wasn't seen as a career. It wasn't seen as something, it was, it was not a joke, but it was something that, you know, people did in the back room and stuff. But now it's a proper career. It's, it's, it's something that you can enjoy nine to five. I think we're getting over the crunch stuff, even though I think that still happens. Um, and, you know, and I know sometimes you still work late making games. I, I think those period 15, 20 years ago where you really had to work seven days a week, you know, 18 hour days. And I think those, those hopefully are starting to go away and, and not happen uh, as, as much across the industry. And I think that's great. And it should be far more do your best work during the day and not seven days, but now it's a career. I love the fact that actually, I think we did it, and if you only did it during a um, survey one, there's like 35 different roles we have at the company. That just shows how diverse and how open and that it can be now to get into the games industry. And it wasn't like that over the years. And I think it's, it's just far more professional, but full of people that are still as passionate. And people are still passionate about games. And I think that's what makes it great. Uh, yeah, people still love making games and that hasn't changed over the years, over the 30 years. There's some very key points that you mentioned there, particularly with, you know, the way we work and, you know, how that's kind of um, moved with the with the games industry and, and the state of it. And, you know, the openness and stuff is, uh, is very important too. Going back to the beginning then, what was your uh, first role in the industry and how did that come about? Obviously you had the accident, but how did you get that? It was, an, I'm, not, I'm not technical. I wasn't technical back then and I, I wouldn't call myself technical now. Um, but I could play games. So testing, testing the games was, was an obvious job for me to do. Uh, so, so that's where 
test, testing gaming, uh, Lemmings on the Game Gear, and then other games, and I think we did Terminator and Probe, were, were brilliant at the time, were doing licenses, and I just worked my way up. And I, and I literally decided to become a producer from that way, and I was good at talking to people and helping people grow and manage people, and I, th- I think that, that became a, cr- a great career path. So, uh, yeah, you said you wasn't technical when you started, uh, and obviously you've, you've developed that, that, I'm sure, over the last 30 years. Um, and you've also, I'm sure you've developed a, uh, a very good sense of what it takes to, to have uh, that kind of responsibility, that kind of role. Uh, so for someone looking to get into a similar role to yourself, uh, what kind of skills uh, would you say is uh, useful for someone in your position or uh, role? I, I, if I look back at what I wish I knew or wish I, I wish I'd known, understood Photoshop better, actually oddly, or something that could visually represent what I'm trying to talk about or get across. Um, I don't think I grasp that well enough. And I th- anyone that wants to come into production I, I, as a producer, I think getting across your ideas is probably the, the, the one of the best things. Um, and then also remembering, in my role especially, even today, you're only as good as your team. It's your team that are going to do the work. It's your team that's going to de- develop the games and always remembering, you know, Make sure your team are re- really believing in what they're making. Uh, I think that 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 that's something that um, I learned early, actually, and that you didn't need any skills in that. That was more about interacting with people and being really good in interacting with people and making sure they they get that and they get the vision. Yeah, definitely. I've talked to a few production-based uh, people, and a lot of people have said that just as important as knowing the the hard skills of production, you need to very much have a value on uh, personal skills and being able to you know understand people and empathy and all that kind of stuff so i think uh, i think what you said is pretty similar and, and, and that's a good example of whether how the industry's changed over the last 30 years as well i think that I, I think there was times that the industry was far more directive and i thought far more do it this way and i think now the industry as a whole as are making games is far more collaborative and far more it's your opinion is very important. In the early days, maybe it might have been one or two people thought their opinions were important and, and it, it driven that, but everybody's a game maker. Everybody has an opinion that's valuable. And I think that's something that's definitely changed. And I'd encourage anyone coming into the industry, you know, introverts, extroverts, whoever, just say what you want, you're passionate. You're, you're at an interview because actually someone wants you there because they, th- they see something in you. And, that, and you should always just be outspoken about what you believe in. I think Dovetail stands as a whole on, you know, passion and hiring passionate people is, uh, is very important. Tracking back a little bit. You started in the industry after, after an accident and stuff and then got, you know, made your way all the way to you are now. Uh, what do you think, if you weren't in your role, uh, if you didn't make the decisions you did, uh, what would you be doing either inside or outside of games? Oh, well, I probably wouldn't be in games. Uh, well, actually, I, I don't know, because I, I, I think I, I've met enough people in industries, possibly. If not, no doubt I'd be running the pub, because that's what my mum and dad did. Um, so, uh, that, that, you know, and then once again, it's people-based, so I probably might have been doing something like that. That's too much hard work, to be fair. Even today, I think it's too much hard work running the pub. Uh, so, but yeah, something like that, something people-based. Yeah, uh, well... Uh, thank you, Rob, for uh, for all that. That was uh, yeah, some very insightful things there. Uh, and thank you for joining me on the uh, Aardvark cast today. Oh, thank you. Really, really enjoyed it, actually. Thank you. Thanks yeah, for your time. Yeah, no, cheers. Um, but yeah, um, like I said earlier, if you are listening uh, and you want to hear more about uh, Rob's role, uh, what's going on at Dovetail, do check out the, the Full Level podcast uh, that will be available on all our uh, platforms. Uh, but yeah, I've been your host, Michael Robber, talking to Chief Development Officer Rob O'Farrell. Uh, from Dovetail. Thanks for listening. Cheers. Thank you.